Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Oblivion. I'm back again. Ugh. I can't believe that Oblivion has gone on long enough to have four breaks. I did a quest here. Or no, three breaks. Wait, I don't need to rest that long. Alright, so I wanted to do this on camera because I, I did do a quest or two off screen. Uh, but yeah. Now you just... Stay at your peak as long as you can. There's no one stronger in Tamriel, but there's always someone younger, a new challenger. So, I've almost definitely got more than one in the chamber. You've been trying too hard, think too little. Relax, trust your instincts, just be yourself. Do the little things and the big things take care of themselves. That is true. Do we have any more? Nah. All right. Well, we had two levels in the chain. We're halfway to another, though. That's pretty cool. I looked up who uh, Mankar Cameron's voice was, by the way. You may have seen a tingle of recognition. Tinkle? Tingle? Twinkle? Of recognition in my eye. <coughs> Uh, ah. When I heard Maker Cameron speak, you may have heard me maybe recognize him. That's Terrence Stamp, <coughs> legendary actor. Though most people would probably know him as Zod in the Superman movie. In the good Superman movie. Zod in the original Superman movies made in the 70s and 80s. The ones with Christopher Reeve and then they recast him. And that was the dumbest thing they ever did. <clears throat> Though it wasn't fully up to them. Chris Rory was like, I don't want to just be the Superman guy. And I was oh. like, why? You're still the best one. Like... <laughs> People literally look at, at Christopher Reeve Superman and they're like, yeah, he was the best. Still is. There have been like five other live action Superman actors, right? There's the dude in the Supergirl Ow. show. There's the guy in the small in the Smallville show. There's Henry Cavill. <laughs> There's the other guy that they recast in the original movies, because I don't think it's Christopher Reeve in Quest for Peace. I don't think it's him in 3 either. Oh. Someone pointed out to me recently, actually, that there are like six... There, there are seven Superman movies. Yeah. Because there's the original four, and then there's... Uh, Man of Steel, and then there's Superman Returns, and then there's Dawn of Justice, which is arguable. But for the live-action Superman movies, almost every single one of them oh. features Lex Luthor and or General Zod as the villains. Like, six out of seven feature one or both of those two villains. And, like, granted, those are two of the best ones. I would like to see more Brainiac, especially now that they're playing with the idea that he's, like, a Kaluan old one, essentially. Um, I might even like to see a Legion of Superheroes uh, movie. I know that that's, like, so out of the question. Uh, and, like, they've been trying to do a live-action doomsday and they kind of did it and it was bad <laughs> which was unfortunate but ha! you'll never take me down fight you want fight. who's this Ow! then i'm just warming up you but oh! <clears throat> <clears throat> Do your worst. 
Oh, you're a bad one. I see. Sorry, I didn't read you. Ooh. Powerful smack there, my good man. I actually love Superman. I know that a lot of people make fun of him. And, like, I, I, the thing is, is that I kind of see it. Because I definitely get why people make fun of Superman. And not for, like, the, oh, it's dumb, his, his you know, his secret identity is a pair of glasses. Because, like, when you actually see Christopher Reeve be Superman and Clark Kent in the same scene, like, there's that scene in the first movie where he switches between both of them and, like, Oh my god, that is one guy, and you physically have to remind yourself, and we only know that because we as the audience sit there and watch it. Like, oh man, that's crazy. That's super powerful and good. That's not what I'm talking about. I think that, you know, Clark Kent being Superman is not, like, crazy. Even in the modern age. Dolly Parton once lost a Dolly Parton lookalike contest. And not because she was Dolly Parton. They thought somebody else looked more like Dolly Parton than her. The, the person in question, in, uh, who they believed was Dolly Parton, by the way, was a drag queen. Mithra. Ah. Come on, follow me. Whoa. That's pretty... Well, the pants are... Can I... I can! Cool. I love that. I might have abandoned my boy. Cool. Um. Anyway, sorry, I got off topic. I think Superman is silly because, like, the idea of somebody who's like almost naive in the way that they're like, yes, people are inherently good. But like, the thing is, is that people can be that good if you believe in them, if you trust in them. I think I think that's powerful and cool and I think that like the fact that there's not a single one of Superman's like imitators or like what if Superman were real like a like a Brightburn <coughs> or a yeah remember Brightburn like the reason that people like and remember the boys is because like the boys has some stuff going on with it that is not just you know more of that more what if Superman but evil. Because, like, the fact that we don't have a single what if Superman but evil that lasts more than a few years, but we do have, you know, the real Superman. And then, like, everyone was waiting for, like, uh, off the top of my head, All Might from My Hero Academia to How does the day greet you? become a what if Superman but evil. Remember, trespassing in the Imperial Palace is a serious problem. Everyone was just a million percent convinced that he was going to just become evil and then he never did and everyone was like wow he's the best character and and he is he's the best character well, in my hero he is so genuine and like that really sticks with people I think and that's that's something about Superman and um, All Might and like a lot of a lot of characters like that you know You know, I admit, like, there's a lot of, not illegitimacy, perhaps, but maybe a little naivete in, like, a, for example, a book like Aragon, right? But then in, like, uh, the Kingslayer Chronicles, the Kvoth books, they almost have, like, the opposite issue, where, like, they're so sardonic and, like, depressive and... and like, constantly grappling between, like, a Mary Sue character and a whole bunch of horrible things happening to him. But, like, 
Aragon's so sincere what and genuine that like oh, only just, quality goods for sale. I love here. I love Aragon. What can I interest you in? I I legitimately just enjoy that book for real. Okay, I've got some. I'm not gonna and, need this night eye, sir. Nor this an fire excellent shield. Excellent bargain. That's more than I'd usually. That's a fair deal. Anyway, the point is, is that Terran Stamp, who played General trend. Zod, played the villain of this game. Uh. The other point is that I think there's a lot of things that people could stand to learn from Superman. You know, like being genuine. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. That seems a fair price. I have a spell for this, I think. I'm just going to hop that. Just get it out of here. I don't think I actually have uses for these either, so That's I'm just going to start hawking them as well. I was thinking, like, I actually good, really enjoyed playing you got a great Skyrim and just being a straight-up merchant. That seems... Like, uh, th An there's this thing that I, I do almost every playthrough now. Tell your I gotta Goodbye. go to the armor shop because I, I want a new helmet. Um, and I gotta fix up all this if I can. Hail, good citizen. How can I... Um, drinking a mocha, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned. I'm such a little baby about coffee that the this is best. mostly milk. Have a look at my wares. I'm Chainmail helm. I wouldn't make that deal with just anybody. Oh, he's got a mithril shield. If you bought that for a song. I'm going to get rid of this. I keep breaking it. Just nothing but trouble, you know? You drop. I'll just get rid of these two. Come back. Let me take a look at what. All right, damn. Then can we slap on that helmet? Oh, it looks terrible. Well, with everything. Oh yeah, for some reason I enchanted that uh Dark Elf. I'm Vernon. Can I interest you in some of my Oh, wares? you have better stuff. Aegis of the Apocalypse. Can I have a try before I buy? Ah, these are Go both ahead. ugly. Have a look at my wares. That dude is making such a profit on these. Goddamn. I can't make that deal. Damn. I pre- Take care. I can be without a helmet for a little bit. But yeah, I was thinking, I don't even fully understand if I could, like, quantify how much I love this, but I, I love just being an everything guy in, in Skyrim. I love being a merchant and just running around and, and like, it's you. selling potions to people. Uh, there's this thing that I always do. This is what I was going to mention, but I always do this. I I pick up a a spell book that's stuffed away in this thing nearby right one. Uh, right white run. Speak. Um, and that's the middle of the map, and it's also like always available. You know, 
It's a guaranteed spawn. It's not like a. It's not luck. Um, and it's a spell that turns silver ore into gold ore. And it turns iron ore into silver ore. So, you know, you can literally buy... I mean, this is probably nothing new to anyone who's played Skyrim, but you can literally buy really cheap iron ore, what which has I a base price of like tw May I interest 20, you in I some of say? my fine wares? I let that go too cheaply. Uh, and then you turn it into gold ore, which has like a base price of like, uh, I don't know, like 70, I think. So you get way more out of it. You drop a fine track. That's more than I'd a good price for a good customer. See if I can't get a little more out. All right. Perfect. Now give me all your stuff. You drop. No deal. Yeah, I don't even know if I could explain why. It's just like, it's so fun to, like, to be a merchant. You drop. Thank. And then like, you know, buy up a bunch of cheap stuff, turn it into something more expensive, and then sell that right back to people. You too. You know, that's awesome, of course. And then also like to to steal or buy Damn. yes to steal or buy like Let's a uh, business. oh those are her story don't mind me i wondered why i didn't see mine to steal or buy like uh alchemy ingredients and then turn those into Profit, essentially, really. <laughs> you bought that for a song. Can I have all of them, please? I, I should do that in, um in Morrowind at some point. Because you know, of course I've done that in, in Skyrim, but like, you know, that's totally a thing that I can do in, in you know, in uh, Morrowind as well. Just run around and hey, be well, a merchant. Go ahead. Only quality goods for sale here. What can I interest you in? You got a great deal there. I'm... I also, um, that's like the things that people love to read about. An excellent bargain. But like, I don't know if I could ever write or read something like that. Like it would, it's so weird and interesting. Cause like, like, um, for those who don't know, this has been a thing in like the whole manga sector. I have... Bye. But sometimes people will like, uh, write books that are essentially just like the the shit you do in a video game go ahead armor weapons i have it all how may i help you I all right i've noticed that a lot of this stuff is very ugly so very goodbye it's interesting it kind of looks like a um 
It's like a hybrid of a. Uh, where the hell are you going? Okay, Jeet. Probably a thief. Um. Don't be the last three to death. Yeah, this helmet is kind of like um. Oh crap! I think I left. I think I left him in that one thing. Yeah, the helmet is a, it's Mongolian and like Norse, like a uh, Ulfbert helmet, something like that. Just like with the little eye slits, but also with like the furs and the, the, the feathering on top. I would say that the, the Mongolian hordes uh, led by Genghis Khan. Take that. I would say that the Mongolian hordes led by one Genghis Khan and like just Vikings in general are probably like the two most well-known and maybe some of the best barbarians ever. Yeah, I told him not to follow me when we went into that oblivion gate. And then I, I had to go stop to upload the episode and do some stuff over there. And I, <clears throat> I guess I didn't tell him to start following me again. So I don't know where the hell he is. Is the... Yep, sure is. Oh! This is, this is so the problem of, like, Ow! almost every... <laughs> I mean, goodness, you know? But yeah, like, in the light novel scene, there's a whole bunch of everything, you know? But a lot of stuff is, like, isekai or video game inspired works and like while those are fine i just can't stand to read a lot of them even though a lot of them sound really interesting but like it, it, it would be a thing where it's like i don't really care you know i think it would be more interesting if i if i was like playing this and this was a real video game oh, we'll put three bucks on him Sometimes it's pretty interesting. I would say that it's like so funny that like <clears throat> a lot of people went into Spice and Wolf looking for like waifu show, you know? Oh, because like there's a big fox girl on the cover. You're like, oh, damn, fox girl. You, Ow. Know? Ow. you look at her and you can't think of anything but fox. Oh. That's textbook, you know, but then the anime is about economics and that's not even a joke, you know? This is the thing that you find. I, I usually make this joke or reference about mangaka, which ah. is the term for manga writer. Uh, normally writer and artist, or at least writer and character designer, and then their assistants pick up the slack. Uh, but the joke is that mangaka typically have uh, two hobbies. One is drawing, and then one is whatever else. So, like... That you and I are about to become the My Hero guy, Hoi Hoshigori. I was just talking about him. Like, he loves superhero comics, like the X Men or whatever. Welcome to the Imperial Palace. And then his other thing is that he likes. Where is Martin? Oh, God, where is Martin? Okay, I hope that you can forgive me for this, but I'm going to no-clip around and look for it. Um, TCL? Yeah, it's TCL in this game. Uh, what was I saying? Right, yeah, mangaka typically have two hobbies. They have drawing, and then there are other things. So, like, the guy who writes My Hero loves superhero and superhero comics... But then he also likes to draw and to design characters. And that's his thing, you know? 
And he talks about how, like, most American comics would be superhero comics. Almost every American comic is a superhero comic anyway. Um... Is it over here? No. But in Japan, you get a lot more diverse things. And he's even mentioned, like, certain comics that he read. And he was like, wow, cool. Like, there's this manga about, like, wine tasting. And it's called Drops of God. Hmm. Yeah, there's a manga about wine tasting literally called Drops of God. There's another manga, like, I don't remember the name of it. It's it's literally like, um... <sighs> Sorry, I'm playing on the name, but it's, it's literally just a manga about, like, overclocking, building, and testing gaming PCs. Like, I don't even think it's about playing video games on your PCs. I think it's just about the gaming part of the PC. <laughs> um, hmm. Well, I... I don't see a... Uh, prince around here. But people seem to expect that he'd be with me. Maybe this is a bug? Like, if you leave... An oblivion gate after telling him to not follow you? Hmm. Imagine if you just like left the emperor in oblivion. That'd be kind of funny. Go away, cougar. I have no use for your worn out charm. To have hurt the, I seem to have hurt the Googers' feelings. But yeah, Spice and Wolf is, is, an, is an example of that. Like, that dude loves economics and <laughs> writing light novels. Maybe that's the problem with a lot, of um, a lot of modern light novels. They just... The people who write them are not very interesting. Like, their hobby is like, I play video games. And like, well, when you sit in front of a camera and, and let's play... You're still a jack-off who contributes to this. stuff. <laughs> uh, okay, end of the day, I'm still very cute on camera all day long. And I can share some interesting um, thoughts about the medium of video games. And uh, I, can, I can demonstrate them while playing a video game. You know, and that's fine. That's fun. That's cool. Uh, plus, I looked really cute on camera. I, some, for some reason, people keep thinking I'm their little meow meow or something. My wife po posted a picture of me to uh, a, a Facebook, and I was, I was wearing this turtleneck, and I had my face tucked into the turtleneck. Uh, and next to me is a picture of my cat. His name is Vengeance. He was actually doing the same thing as well. He has a little sweater we put on him in the winter, just because he gets a little nippy sometimes. And, and I had my face stuffed into my turtleneck like this. I'm sure this sounds great on my audio. But he was also doing the same thing because sometimes he just burrows his nose into the neck part of it because his nose gets cold. And the rest of him can be warm because he can put his, his feet under him and the little paw pads on his feet will stay warm. But his nose has to be exposed to the elements, so he'll just stuff it into the sweater. And so, like, both of us were stuffing our noses into our sweater, and that was cute. So my wife posts a picture of us, and a lot of people seem to be worried that me and or the cat were actually cold. They were like, oh, is he cold? Oh, no. Like, about me. Whoa, six dollars. Anyway, that has nothing to do with what I was talking about, but I wanted to share. People, people seem to get weird about me. I don't know what it is. I won't complain yet. I'll wait for like a horrible stalking incident, I guess. Uh, that's gonna age well. I don't know that it, I don't even know that it is or isn't gonna age well. It's just like the fact that I've said that, now people are gonna be on the lookout for it. Maybe it'll affect the cultural zeitgeist in some way. 
the point is is that let's playing a video game does i think contribute more to society and more to legitimate discussion of video games as an art form than like writing about them and a lot of the dudes who write light novels where the idea is like, whoa, what if I was in a video game? Is like, whoa, what if I was in a video game? And like, sometimes those dudes are given like unlimited power and then they just blow it. Like, oh man, what if I was in a video game and the world had slavery in it? And then I contributed to slavery because it was culturally okay there and I wouldn't want to offend anyone in my new world by not Ow. taking slaves. Even though I have the power to not do that. Look, I know I don't think I don't know if people come here for this, but <laughs> my point is is um I feel like if you if people making light novels had more interesting hobbies, then maybe light novels themselves <laughs> would improve. You know? The old idea of my hobby is writing and one other thing, or my hobby is drawing and one other thing, and it's like, oh, I make the Pokemon manga. My hobby is bug collecting, and so I just turn that into, you know, my, my cool little comic I'm, I'm, I'm writing and drawing. Okay, man. He must also have TCL on. I'll figure out something to do about King Emperor even uh, between episodes. But I'm gonna finish fighting these skeletons and cut it. Ah! Mostly because I won't be able to fast travel and get anything done without them bothering me. Maybe that's the problem with light novels. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna push that as my new lore. Light novels are getting bad because the people writing them don't have interesting enough hobbies. Same deal with same deal with manga. If you're wondering why Ow! people have been like why things are coming out and they're just not as interesting, it's because people don't have interesting hobbies. You know? Oh, my hobby is that I play video games, but that doesn't Ow! translate into reading a book that good. Oh. Can I? Where am I? You know, I, I, I'm sure that you have a fun time playing Dragon Quest 1, but, you know, for everyone else, when you're emulating that experience, that's not as, ex that's not as exciting. You know, I'm sure that you, f you feel cool when you're playing Dragon Quest 1. Or, wh what, is, what is the one that the everyone rips off? It's either Dragon Quest 1 or, like, Dragon Quest 3 or something. Oh, God, they're everywhere. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, this just doesn't make good writing, you know? <clears throat> maybe some maybe some light novel authors write with the intent of like, oh, maybe it'll be okay enough, like, you know, just not crap for long enough that I'll get picked up for, a, uh, for an anime. <clears throat> and then I can rely on the animators to make it look <clears throat> cool. Like, no matter what I do, then it'll look cool. Ha! But then I, I think that's lame, actually. Like, I think that anyone writing a book should write it with the intent for the book to be awesome. That should be the complete experience. All right, I'm going to pause it. I'll be back when I have found our Emperor Martin. I've been Alfred. This has been Oblivion. Uh, getting back in. <laughs> Sorry that I've taken a third break during this. Uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye.